Hi, thanks for joining me. So I believe that uh, Matthew 24 primarily is a prophecy that Jesus, I know he spoke it, I don't have to believe that. The question is, what does it mean? And my personal opinion is most of it is not for the end times today, but most of it uh, was for um, the disciples and the apostles and in their time. He was really speaking to them and they were asking those questions. But again, if I were to take a timeline here, uh, here it is right here, I would suggest that the, let's see if I can get this open. Ah, there we go. I would suggest um, we had the first century, second, this is way back when Jesus lived and all. Um, the first century, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way up to the 21st century. Um, I would suggest that when Jesus is speaking, he was really talking to that group right there for that time. Like some people take this passage and, and he's speaking to you and all that, but it's really to us. And yet he was really speaking to them. He was answering their questions. Do you remember the questions that they asked? Of course, the question sounds like um, it could be really talking about um, the, uh, the end times, <laughs> you know, at least in their minds, maybe the end times. But their questions, if you remember, that they were asking in the beginning of this chapter is, when will these things be? And what they're really talking about is Jerusalem and the temple, particularly, I think they were asking about the temple, although it included Jerusalem, because remember he said, um, they were like talking about the beauty of the stones and how gorgeous it was. It was a beautiful temple. And, and he said, oh, these things are going to be torn down where there's not one stone going to be upon, upon another. I mean, almost literally, that's what happened. It could be a little bit of a, an exaggeration, hyperbole. But the fact is, all oh, those stones were torn down. And Josephus, I remember reading, uh, that the historian looked at it and looked like nobody even lived there ever. It's just that that was how bad it was ruined. Well, that's what they're asking. When is this going to be? Like what? He never really gives us the answer on that. He gives them all sorts of things that's going to lead up to that point, but he didn't say when exactly. He didn't want them to know that. And then uh, the what is signs of his coming. They were talking about like they realized that he was leaving and all, I guess. He, they kind of got that. And when are you going to return and all that? And so he gives them signs, which we haven't gotten to yet. And then, uh, and then it says, what will be the uh, sign of the end of the age? The question is what? What is that, the end of the age? Um, is it the end of the age of the Jewish, you know, covenant like or like the new age that's going to come he kept talking about a king the kingdom is here the kingdom is at hand you know he kind of talked about the sense of something new is happening here and so well what's the end of the old age you know um or is he really talking about the end of the world like when is that going to come i don't think that's what he's talking about the word age doesn't mean that it's a time period here now the next thing he says I mean, he mentioned various things and he said, the, they that it shall endure to the end shall be saved. And really what he was talking about right before that, if you remember, was the church being persecuted, hated and, and insulted and scourged, you know, flogged, like whooped. You, you guys are going to get killed and all that. He's really talking to the church at that time. And uh, so um, he, he said, whoever endures to the end shall be saved. Now, the wonderful thing about Jesus and the whole Bible is that uh, a lot of the things, almost all the things, you could take it from what God's talking to them about and it, you could take some stuff out of it, principles. Like, hey, we're into the, I believe, the real end times and that we need to prepare. And by the way, that's a big reason why he's telling them all to do this. Remember, he said, hey, watch out that no one deceives you. In other words, practically speaking, you need to do this and watch out and be careful. But later he even gives us really a major reason why he's sharing this, and that's to prepare yourself, to be watchful, uh, that you need to be acting on what God wants you to do. And that's the same thing with you, if you're listening to this and me. We need to prepare for the return of Christ. We need to pre prepare our lives so that we're ready at any time. And so that's just really important. By the way, chapter 25 really talks about that. So now the next thing he says after about enduring to the end, and he's really talking about specifically 
enduring what? Persecution. You're going to be killed. You're going to be flogged. You're going to get hurt and all that. He said, prepare. And whoever stays with Jesus, whoever says, yep, I'm still becoming a Christian, whether you kill me or not, I'm going to still not become a Christian. I'm going to remain a Christian. That's enduring to the end in the face of, of persecution and all and mistreatment. So then he goes on and says, and I'll read it to you. And this gospel of the kingdom Jesus said, shall be preach and preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, that sounds like he's talking about all the way to the end of time, and like right now. And it's been 2,000 years since Jesus said that, and, he's, and we're all trying to, he's still trying to get everybody to hear the gospel. For sure, we should be doing that. We should be spreading the word, and a lot of the people in the world have not heard yet. Most people, I believe, have, have heard of the gospel. But I don't know that that's really talking about that. In context of what Jesus is saying about the end, the end of Jerusalem, the end of the of the the, the temple and all, um, the gospel, of the kingdom is going to be uh, being preached to all the world and to all nations, and then that end shall come. He, they're talking about the end of that. I think is what he's saying and about Jerusalem and all. And the fact is, guess what? The gospel really was preached throughout the whole earth at that time. You say, well, how do you know, Gord? Paul said it. He said in Romans chapter 10, he said it in Colossians chapter 1, the, the, everybody, the whole world's hearing about it. Every, as a matter of fact, he even said that in Romans, he said all of the whole world has heard about your faith, Rome, you know, Roman Christians. So he, and by the way, there's a whole list of things that he went to. He went to Arabia, he went to um, like Greece, he went all the way to the end, uh, a way, way further out place. Paul went everywhere. I mean, he, he really, really preached the gospel everywhere. To Spain, he went to, uh, of course, Israel. He went all over the place. And it wasn't just him. All the apostles were going all over the place preaching the gospel. And he said a couple times, like, it's been spread. The gospel has been spread throughout the earth. And that is true. Every nation has, has basically heard about it. Now, not every single creature and every single person, although in Colossians one time he did say, hey, every creature is really listening, hearing, getting the gospel. So it's kind of cool. They really got it. So I think that's, uh, that has already happened. Not to say that we don't take it back then, what he said, and use it today, like I was saying. So again, he said the gospel of the kingdom the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, the rule of God, the domain of God. And now um, Jesus gave us a fuller gospel after he died and raised from the dead. That is the heart of the gospel. Jesus Christ died for your sins. God sent Jesus to die for you in order for you to get right with God. That's the gospel. And if you have faith in Jesus and what he did for you on that and you commit your life to him, you can be saved. That's good news to me. I have, I'm under his rule now. I'm under his kingdom and his power. Okay. The gospel of the kingdom shall be told to all the world. That word world right, right there literally means the inhabited earth, like the, the, the world that has people in it. You know, that's, that's what he's saying there. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the world and to all the nations. And so there's a green light. There's a green light. The blue represents, I guess, the blue planet world. It's mainly uh, oceans. I don't know. Anyway, so, and then we have uh, not a yellow light. In one sense, we do not want a yellow light. You want to go, 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 share the gospel. And, and you can wait on God, I guess, you know, like waiting at a traffic light to empower you and lead you specifically where he wants you to go. And then the end will come. There's a stop, stop sign, stop light right there. And then the end will come. Now, it could be the end of the world, like what we think. And we as Christians nowadays would like to think, yeah, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached all over there. That's why we need to go to all the continents, all the countries. We need to share the gospel, which I agree we do. And then the end will come when everybody hears about it. I don't think that's necessarily what he's saying. Uh, and if you really take away that thought and you read what he's answering them, their questions, when is this going to happen with the uh, Jerusalem? When is it going to happen? And when is uh, the end of this is going to happen? You know, the Jewish traditional, you know, thing. And, uh, and you know, when is that going to happen? And when is the, the Gentiles going to be bringing in and all that? That's what... Um, I think it's the end 
Now, you may disagree with me if, if, you, if you're an adult here and you're listening to this, but I think if you really take it carefully and get the other stuff out of your mind and just read it plainly, he's saying that's what's going to happen. And especially in light of what Paul said. Paul said that it has already happened, all the nations. So then the end came, and it did. You know, that was the end of the Judaism of that day. And that was the, and there was a new kingdom now, a new thing, and that's the new covenant, not the old covenant. The end of the new old covenant, new te Old Testament, and now the New Testament happened. So I hope that helps you understand some stuff. And we need to go ahead and uh, be like Paul and preach the gospel to all the world ourselves. Like Matthew goes on and says in chapter 28, preach the gospel to every creature. And, uh, and then our end shall come, you know, the end of the whole history and the end of the whole world will finally end up uh, happening. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll continue. God bless you.